It was a big fucking deal because we actually literally paid for them to kind of get here, get their van, and everything like that because we really loved that band, you know? And it was also, you know, obviously a, a pretty crazy year for us as individuals because a little record called And Out Come the Wolves. <laughs> and that, 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 yes, that record did change. Changed my life in a massive way. It changed uh, so many things, you know? And uh, one of the things that it didn't change, though, is where I came from. You know what I mean? I've always been a working class kid, and I've always looked for every glass ceiling to punch my fucking way through. And I've never given a fuck. And this is a little song that says exactly that. <laughs> Oh yeah! 
naked, fucking levitating in a fucking forest. Guess what? You're all gonna fucking die. We all get off at the same bus stop, so why the fuck are we arguing about who's going to the bus stop first? Think about it, right? So I started having these epiphanies. And it changed me in a massive way. And I could sit here and talk to you about it all night, but I won't because this is not about me. It's about all you. And this one is for my mom. And by the way, we got a brand new record in the can. Yes! And as, we, as we're here tonight, we're working out, maybe hopefully we'll see you guys next year. Yes! I'm sort of on like a UN peacekeeping mission right now. Hey Lars, how are you doing? Are they still friendly? Ah, oh, they're still a bunch of cunts. But they got good food. England, come for the food, stay for the weather. 
But anyways, this is a little number that I normally every night I put out to my two boys, Wolfgang and Cern. But since I'm here with all of you tonight, I want to put this one out to each and every one of you, okay? Yeah? Please set these people up. 
to the six of us. Just a pebble that's an hour of the loser. It was like a tree. While the pump truck is in the middle of the stuff, it's around on the corner, so it's not a tree. anti-racist and anti-fascist, okay? So let there be no questions. I have no time for that shit. I don't want that shit anywhere near me. And if you're like that, your grandfather would be very, very, very disappointed in you. Because he didn't go over to Germany to fight Nazis so you could raise your right arm like a fucking stupid Nazi, okay? Because that's what you are. You're a cunt. So 1995, me and Tim Armstrong went to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where we saw our friend Mr. Howie Pyro, God rest his soul, perform with his band D-Generation. And D-Generation was playing with a band that I grew up that I just played a song from, that band was Kiss. About 10 minutes before Kiss went on, a security guard came over, me and Tim were sitting next to each other, and the security guard said to us, hey, the Kiss guys want to meet you. Really? Yeah, you got about 10 minutes. If you want to do it, you better do it now. Okay. So we get up because, you know, since I was about four years old, I've loved Kiss. I did, once I heard the business, once I heard the last resort, once I heard the foreskins, infrared, copy rejects, the list goes on and on and on ad infinitum. Those Kiss records, I will say, went into the shelf. But I still had that love because that was the first kind of music I really adored. I loved rock and roll, and that's what I loved about Oi, and that's what I loved about punk rock. I loved it because it was real and it was honest. And whether or not you think Kiss sucks or not, I don't care. The point is, is that for some reason, it resonated something in me. Shh, please, please. And it's, it's like one of those things that like when you actually like are meeting somebody for the first time, they always say never meet your heroes, but I can tell you something. I've met a lot of them. And there's only been one come. One. I'm not gonna mention his name. No, because I'm not a shit talker, okay? I'll, do, I'll mention his name on fucking Instagram or Facebook like everybody else does. Thoughts and prayers. So anyways. So we decide that we're going to go onto the backstage and meet these guys. And there's fucking Gene Simmons. Cod piece right here in my face. Whoa, Gene. Packing a cucumber in your leg. And my eye out. But here's the demon, right? And it's me and Tim. We're like, what the fuck? How the fuck did we get here? And Gene Simmons says, Lars Frederson, Tim Armstrong, I'm Gene Simmons. We're like, yeah, you know, nice to meet you. I don't know, I just want to let you know that Out and Out and the Wolves is one of my favorite records of the year. It gets better, it gets better, it gets better, it gets better. Especially the track Avenues and Alleyways. I love the sentiment, the anti racist sentiment, the anti fascist sentiment. And I just want to say, behalf of the Jewish community, thank you very much. I'm like, wait, the demon's Jewish? <laughs> Scratching my head. Rob Halford said the same fucking thing. Couldn't fucking believe it. I just met K.K. Downing. 
That was a fucking trip. You want to you want to know what he showed me how to play? Judas Priest songs today, weren't you? Oh, go get your fucking money back. Too late. But anyways, so you never really know what you can do in your life. And that's my point. You never know who's going to hear what, or who's going to touch what, or how it's going to turn out. Never in a million years did I ever think that, like, fuck, Gene Simmons would know one of our songs, or Rob Halford would come up to me and watch me and Tim play our set in some festival in Germany when he was with this band too. And I remember we're playing a song and me, you could see it sometimes, maybe you can't, but me and Tim always like to crack jokes when we're playing. And I'll come up to him and I'll whisper something in his ear and then he'll laugh. But I went over to him one time and I was like, yo dude, Rob Alvin's watching this. <laughs> Tim. We're still a car. <laughs> this guy over there with a the tie dye t shirt. <laughs> that's not tie dye, that's tattoos. <laughs> what? It's fucking Rob Halford. <laughs> that's my little skin for the night. And I'm winded. <laughs> Anyways, this one's called Avenues and Alleyways.
it's going to be a little different because I don't know Tim's parts. You know, he does. I'll do. I'm going to sing it for the you for the best that I can. Okay, I'll give you my all. You guys, come on. song that I'm about to do has sort of followed me for as long as it has. And when we did it on the first Bastards record, I was always a fan of Billy Bragg. I always loved his message. I always loved his tone. Even his love songs, you know? Something struck a chord with me from him. 
and I just never would ever, ever, ever think a dream. Let me tell you something about Billy Bragg. 1996, we're touring in Australia. And Billy Bragg is going to be on the tour, but it's gonna, he's going to be not be there for a few shows. So we heard that he was on site a couple shows in. And you know what that motherfucker did? Let me tell you how much of a cool guy he was. When we went over to meet him, before he even said a word to us, he pulled up his sleeve and he had a fake tattoo of a jaguar head and it said rancid above it. And I thought that's probably the classiest move, right? To make somebody feel that comfortable, like, yes, I know little Sammy's a punk rocker, I know that you mentioned me, and I'm fucking flattered. And that's a pretty fucking cool guy. So, before I play this song, let's give him his due. Give it up for Mr. Billy Bragg. Because this song translates. It doesn't matter if you grew up here in England or if you grew up in Campbell, California. When you're a working class kid and you fight and you work hard and you get somewhere, that's what it's all about. It's not about staying down low. It's about busting out. That's the way it was for me. And it's not about cheering for the underdog and then once they become the champion, tearing them fucking down immediately. I'm sorry, but that's what, kind of what we do as society. And I never fucking understood that. We're going to root for this guy, root for this guy, root for this guy, but as soon as he gets out of it, you go, you're a fucking cunt. You forgot where you came from. I don't know. I don't know if that to be true. Because if Billy Bragg did, do you think he would do that? Do you think K.K. Downing would do that to a guy like me? That's what I'm trying to say. These are the types of people that I look up to. Real honest people. And this song is a reflection of that. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time, your patience, your voices, and your applause. My name is Lars Fredrickson, and we'll see you next time. Just because you're better than me Doesn't mean I'm amazing Just 